All right, this problem says calculate the area enclosed by the graphs of that and that. Now, this is weird because it has uh, y's in it. Um, sometimes you might see these written like this, uh, x equals y squared minus 1, and this one, x equals y squared minus 1 eighth y to the fourth plus 1. Now, these are weird because they're functions of y, they're not functions of x, something we're not used to seeing. If it was a function of x, then we can look at our um, x and y axis like normal. Okay, we can say like, oh yeah, um, we're going to plug in uh, x's to get y's, and then our, our lower bound and our upper bound, there'll be x values because we're plugging in x's. Okay, but these ones... Um, these are functions of y. What that means is when, if you were able to plug this into your calculator, which you're not, you can do it in Desmos. You, can, you can't do it in your, your calculator. Uh, it would go like this instead. And so it would make the axis vertical. The best way that I, I could like visualize this is after I graph it in my calculator, I take out all the y's and I put in x's. I turn my calculator sideways and I go, oh, okay, I can see which one's the upper curve, which one's the lower curve. Um, so let's talk about this one really fast. If I were to take this one and turn it sideways, um, let's see, be like, I don't know if this is going to work out. I probably shouldn't have tried it. Uh, and it just took a screenshot and twisted it. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> there you go. I did what you said. I copied it and I turned it sideways. Um, it's exactly the same thing, except it's a little big. Um, let's shrink it just a smidge. All right, thank you. Looks kind of weird, right? Um, so notice that the positive y's are on the right side, okay? Where the positive numbers and the negative numbers are, it's still, um, uh, well, okay, so maybe it's not quite so because these are positive and this is supposed to be positive on the x-axis, so I should probably invert this too, but it's kind of weird, but now you can see which one's on the top and which one's on the bottom. So if I were to see my graph like this, and I'm pretending that this is a, this is a y right here and this is an x, uh, which, which, um, which line would be the one that's on top? Let's see, let's make this one red and let's make this one blue. Which, which line would be the, the, the curve that's on top? Because remember how we go to top minus the bottom curve? Well, I need to know which one's on top on this one, yeah? The side, right or left? No. Um, no? Okay. You have like <laughs> I just I said what I want you guys to say. The boundary. Yeah, the, the bound. Well, the boundaries before were x values. Now they're y values. Okay, so that's just like you don't need to have like o from here to here. You right. Just, right. That was my question. So, which one would be um, the top one? The blue. Uh, maybe my picture stinks. Yeah, it is the red. It's supposed to go from right to left. Okay, so any, instead of going from top to bottom, it goes from right to left. Okay, so we're going to take this red function as like it's on top. So how would we visualize this? Well, you could take these guys right here and just plug them into your calculator to see which one's on top. So let's do that. Um, I think I already did it once. So if I throw my calculator up here. Here's our, here's our two functions. Okay, so uh, the first function, here, let's do a trace right here. The blue function is the x squared minus 1, and our red function is the x squared minus 1 eighth x to the fourth plus 1. So those are our two functions, and so clearly the red one is on top, right? Now, can you take that and turn it sideways in your head and, like, see how it's vertical? I don't know, maybe yes. Because don't you have to invert it, too? Yeah, you have to invert it and turn it. Yeah, it is, it is pretty confusing. Oh, cool. Hold on one sec. Hold that right there. I can probably just screenshot it and send it to me. Screenshot it and send it to me. All right, cool. Thank you for just airdropping me that. Let me uh, throw it up here. Actually, we'll go like this. And then, um, oh, yeah, thank you, Nareda. Or, Nareda got the shout out. Okay, so let me drop this on here. Hold on. You guys see it? So, which one is on top? 
It's the red one, right? In our, in our picture right here, you can see that the red one's on top. So we're going to want to take the, the most right function and subtract the, the most left function. Or if you graph it like this, you can just go, oh, top minus the bottom. Uh, and the reason why I really want to show you guys visually what it looks like is because you might get a problem that only gives you a picture, and then you have to find the area between the two curves. So the, the area that we're looking for is this right here. Here's the area between the two curves. And then our upper and our lower bounds are going to be right here and right here. Which one's the lower bound? Is it the A or the B? Well, I organized it so you would see it. So it would be from A to B. And now we have to input our, or put in our, our functions. Okay, we got to go top, most right function minus the most left function. Right function minus the left function. So here we go. Um, oh, but I need an A and I need a B. So how would I find the A and how would I find the B? Yeah. Now you can take both equations and set them equal to each other and solve it that way, or you can use your calculator to help you find the points of intersection. So let's practice that really fast. Let's find now which one are my y values right now? The x's or uh, on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis? The horizontal axis are my y values. So let's um, practice finding the points of intersection. So I'm going to press five here under calculate, and then. Uh, I had to just select the first curve, so it asks for the, what is the first curve? Uh, that blue one, that sounds good. And the second curve, the red one, that's good. And then we put our cursor next to, see, see my cursor right here, you have to move it. Put it next to the point of intersection that you want to find first. So I'm going to find that one first, and so I press enter to say yes, go ahead and guess. And it gives me the point of intersection at, um, at 2, uh, 3. So the 2 is actually your, your y. That's your upper bound. And so on this, I would write not, not b. I would write 2. Okay, so what's my lower bound? Well, you do the same thing, and then you would get a negative 2 for this one right here. Now I do the right curve minus the left curve. So I'm going to say x squared minus 1 over 8x to the fourth plus 1. And I'm going to subtract from that the lower curve, which is... Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it x? I'm sorry, it's not x. That's supposed to be y, huh? Yeah, yeah those are supposed to be y's. So y, y, is it y squared minus, minus one. 1? All right, don't forget to put parentheses, and it's dy. Distribute the negative, so we have a negative y squared and a positive 1. The y squareds will cancel out because we have one positive, one negative, and I'm left with negative 1 over 8 y to the fourth power, and then we get a plus 2 for our constants. Put the parentheses from negative 2 to 2. Now I do the antiderivative, FTC1. So I'm going to get um, y to the fifth because I have to add 1 to that exponent, and then I have to divide this by 5, which is the same as multiplying it by 1 over 5, so we have negative 1 over 40. And then we have plus 2y. This one gets a y. This constant gets a y because you didn't have a y before. Now I'm going to plug in negative 2 and positive 2. Well, I plug in positive 2 first, I suppose. When I plug in positive 2, this is what we get. So it looks like we have negative 1 over 40. We plug in 2 right here, and we're raising that to the fifth power. And then I have to add 2 times 2. And then I'm going to subtract the next one. So that's... Plugging in negative 2, I go negative 40 times negative 2 raised to the fifth power uh, plus 2 times negative 2. I always check to see if I can cancel stuff out so I don't end up doing a bunch of calculations and then find out later, oh, I could have just canceled those out. So we have a, a, a 1 over 40 times 2 to the fifth power. This is going to be a negative number. Agreed? This one right here almost looks like him, so I'm just going to check him to see if they cancel out. Um, now, if I, if I raise negative 2 to the fifth power, that number will be negative because it's an odd exponent. So that negative number times the negative 140 would make it positive, right? But then we have a subtraction right here, so we have to change it back to a negative. So this would be a negative, and this would be a negative. So they don't cancel out. If one was negative, one was positive, then they would cancel out, and I'd be able to just go like this. Yay! But you can't right now because they're both negative. So let's uh, finish this now. So 2 to the 5th power, I think, is 32, right? So I have negative 32 over 40, and plus 4 from the 2 times 2. 
and now I'm going to distribute this negative right here. That's going to be positive. It means that's going to be positive. This one's going to be negative. All right, so then this is going to be negative 32 over 40 because negative 2 raised to the fifth power is negative 32, and then I put that over 40, and then I'm going to add 4 to that. Whew. Wow. All right, so negative 64 over 40, which should simplify to something, and then I have plus 8. So what is uh, 64? What can I divide the top and bottom by? 8, and so this is going to be um, an 8 right there, a negative 8, and this is going to be a 5, so we have 5 over 8. What is 5 over 8 as a mixed number? Negative 1 and 3 fifths plus 8. All right, so what is 8 minus 1? It's 7. And then, so we have 7 minus 3 over 5, which would be 6 and 2 thirds. No, sorry, 6 and 2 fifths. And that is the area of the shaded region right there.